Hey, Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. We're constantly getting calls on what is filter face velocity and why does it matter? So I thought I'd do a little video and sort of address that uh, question here. So if you come over here and we'll take a look at MeasureQuick for just a minute. When you enter in filter information into MeasureQuick, uh, a lot of times you're entering in, in this case I have a 16 by 25 filter. It's a general error, um, 16 by 25 MERV 11, right? And I'll go ahead and hit continue on here. And then when we go to the performance section, you'll see that if we scroll down a little bit in our airside performance, we get a, obviously an estimated airflow calculation. But we also get down here a return air filter face velocity. And it's 250 to 500 feet per minute is ideal. And in this case, we're at 289 feet per minute. So that's the actual speed of the air going across the filtering. Well, first of all, let's talk about how that's calculated. So this is just a simple calculation. Again, filter face velocity is measured in feet per minute. All right, so that's feet per minute is just like miles per hour. It's just the speed of the air going across the filter media. So if you want to calculate F FPM, you take your CFM divided by your area in square feet. So you get feet cubed per minute divided by feet squared is going to give us feet per minute. So if we were to take a 16 by 25 filter. What we have to do is first of all, convert it to square feet. So we have to divide it by 144 inches squared. So 16 by 25 is 400 divided by 144 is 2.78 feet squared of filter media. That's all that is, it's just square feet of filter area. We take that 800 CFM divided by 2.78 feet, and that gives us 288 feet per minute of velocity going across the filter. So that, that falls in that range of 250 to 500, that ideal range is perfect. Well, what happens if we go with a larger filter? So if we take it up to a 20 by 25 divided by 144, that gives us 3.47 feet squared of area. Take the same 800 CFM, divide 3 point into 800 by 3.47, that gives us 230 feet per minute. So that slower air velocity is just gonna give us better filtering. Now I said between 250 and 500 is ideal. If you go lower than that, it's really not gonna hurt anything. It's just probably a little more filter media than you might need. Now, once you go above, let's say 500 towards 700 feet per minute, what happens is you get sifting of the air and sifting of the dirt through the filter. So the dirt molecules are going so fast that they don't even get trapped by the filter media and they go straight through the filter and end up on your blower, your circuit board, and your coil. So we want to make sure that we have enough filter media that the air velocity is going slow enough that we actually trap the dirt in the filter media. So a couple other things we need to look at when we're looking at filter medias, right? Now, interestingly enough, this is a, a 20 by 21 inch, and this is a 16 by 25. If you were to do the math, two times two, 20 times 20 is 400, 16 by 25 is 400, yet you got a one inch filter, you got a three inch filter. And this one here is a MERV 8, this one here is a MERV 13. Well, what makes these filters so much different, right? I mean, obviously this is a lot thicker, but why? Well, the big reason is, is this filter has a lot lower pressure drop because this media is like a cotton media, it's, it doesn't really slow the air down uh, that much or create that much pressure drop. This one here is probably a lot thicker of a media that is a lot more restrictive. So in order to have these two filters have the same pressure drop, this 20 by 20 and 16 by 20, they need a lot more filter area, surface area, and that's why they have these big pleats in there, right? So the, the key thing is when you're looking at filter face velocity, if my filter face velocity was, let's say 500, I would need two of these filters or two of these filters in parallel to get my filter face velocity back down to that 250 feet per minute. So that's one important element. Now, the second thing you'll notice, this filter is actually dirty. You can see this one's nice and new and white, and this one's actually getting a little bit dirty. And you can see how equally the dirt loaded across this filter, right? And that's because the dirt loaded this way because we're coming straight down this ductwork. We have enough time for the air to actually uh, straighten out and evenly flow across the filter media. If you take a look at this filter media, this is uh, out of a return air box. You can see if I turn this a little bit sideways, how heavily the dirt loaded across the bottom and how little dirt loaded across the top of this. Now let me take you over and I'll show you why on here because this actually goes in and you can see this is the upflow arrow right here so this was uh, loaded in like that so if we look at this filter rack when the air comes down here right it's coming straight down 
and again it's hitting the bottom of the filter so all the air is sort of cramming in down here which is loading up the bottom of this media. The top is very, getting very little airflow through it. So that, that's one problem with this type of design. It's just simply, it's not gonna load as evenly that as we have the filter grill in the side return here. Now we also took some additional steps here because I wanted to make sure that no dirt got around this filter because the way this door sits on here, you can see there's a small, like one eighth inch gap here between the filter and the panel. So we actually added some foam in there to make sure that no dirt's going around the filter, but instead it's all going through. So that has a nice, good seal on it. Now if we go over here, we'll take a look at General Air. General Air's probably got, in my opinion, the best filter uh, medias on the market. They do a couple of really unique things. Uh, number one is, the way the filters are made, they're very, very well gasketed. So this is a, a MERV 11 filter. You can see the filter goes in like this. So the airflow is going down through here. But on the sides of this filter, it's got these foam gaskets here. And these foam gaskets, when you slide it in, allow that filter to seal very tight. In fact, you can hear it sort of squeak as it slides in there because those, those are stopping air from going around it. Now, again, always look at the front of your filter because if this was just flat across here, we have this area I could put my hand into that air could go around the filter. And air will go around it much easier than it will go through it. So what General Air did here is they have gasketing to make sure that the filter is completely sealed as it's going on here. So when I close this guy in, those gaskets seal against that filter, and that filter is going to be nice and tight. Now all this stuff is really slick. You know, we got good filtering, but now how do, what do, how do we make sure that that filtering is actually working and doing what it's supposed to do? Because there's really, when we're talking about indoor air quality, there's only a couple things we can do. One is control the source of particulates or dirt. Uh, we can uh, control the source, we can add a ventilation, and then we can also add filtration. And the best thing I, I can tell you to do for indoor air quality is to trap dirt and throw it away, right? But how do we make sure those filters are working? Well, in our case here, we have what's called uh, induct air monitoring. So uh, she can go up here and uh, take a couple shots of some of these. I'm actually monitoring our indoor air coming in and one of our suppliers going out because we're doing a little bit of an airflow study. Well, what you're looking at is a Haven central air monitor, right? And this is a monitor that actually monitors in the ductwork. So these are, these are slick, these are like room monitors, but they only tell you what's happening in the room. This is a whole house monitor that actually tells you what's happening in your space. So this first one here, this first hole is watching temperature, relative humidity, and volatile organic chemicals. And the second one's watching the air velocity, as well as the particulates that are going by here. So I know how much, how much dirt is in my air, the temperature, and the relative humidity of the air. And what's nice with a central air monitor is then I can pair it up with a central air controller that actually takes some action. So what I've got here is the bottom one, the top one here actually controls my dehumidifier, which is down here, and a humidifier, which is in the back. And then this one's controlling my fan and a UV light. And so what I'm doing is actually now monitoring making sure my filter's doing what it's supposed to do, as well as letting the central air controller control my relative humidity, uh, both summer and winter. And relative humidity is one of the most important things to control when it comes to your indoor air quality. Excessive amounts of humidity can lead to mold issues and outgassing and a lot of organic volatile organic chemicals. And not enough humidity can make your textiles, your carpeting, other things break down, creating a lot of dust and particulates. So while the filtering can grab those and throw them away, what we want to do is just stop the source uh, from happening in the first place. So we want to accurately control that temperature and humidity in our home, and that's going to take care of that. So when you pair the central air monitor up with the central air controller, you get the best of all worlds. So you know, at the end of the day, what we're watching filter face velocity for is to make sure that air is going by that filter slow enough that it can capture the particulates. Now, the other thing I want to show you that's interesting with this is, if you take a look over here, this condensate inside this trap is almost crystal clear in here. And the reason that this condensate is crystal clear is because dirt is not bypassing my filter. So that means a couple of really important things when it comes to the longevity of my system. That means, A, I'm not going to have condensate trap plugged Ever. So I'm not going to be going out on nuisance calls for that. It's going to keep my circuit board clean. Circuit boards are extremely expensive inside of equipment. 
We don't want to get that board dirty because dirt tracks through electrical equipment and it will cause nuisance problems with your electronics. Then it also keeps your evaporator coil clean. Evaporator coil cleaning is a pain and it's expensive and it causes uh, some significant uh, efficiency losses over time. And then additionally, we're keeping our supply air duct clean to make sure that we're not transferring dirt around the house. And that's really all there is to it. So if you want to know more about this, uh, keep watching. We're going to do some more videos explaining the effects of relative humidity in your home. I think that'll be an interesting one. But this is just sort of a primer into filtering and indoor air quality and what we can do to control that. If you start actually applying some of this to your work, I can guarantee you, if you watch your filter face velocities, you have opportunities to sell additional uh, filters and better control the IAQ in your home. And that was probably one of the best things I did in my house was doubling up my filters. It cut my dusting down by a factor of 10. And pairing that with a central air monitor and controller just allows me to know that my IAQ is and taking an active uh, role in you know, controlling my house versus just knowing that something's happening in the background. So if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them at the, in the uh, bottom of the video. If you would, please like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, that's all I have for today. This is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.